Uh, so can I get the first question from the floor? Um, mic will be passed around, so if you can just raise your hand and, um, yeah. Any questions? Uh, no. Okay. Sorry. What? Uh, you want to ask a question for Roger? Okay, to Roger. Okay, sure. Yeah, since there are no questions, so <laughs> we have to make a floor. Oh well, just a uh, simple question. So these monuments, they have like religious references, like the best relief that looked like from temples and you know the stones, sanctuaries and all that. Do they have do people treat them in a way like a sacred place? Or do we do people worship them in some ways or it's just completely secular, secular monument despite their forms? Um, completely secular. Um, which there's a quote from Benedict Anderson talking about the form of the monument to the unknown soldier, where he talks about how the kind of um, reverential worship that um, people perform at monuments to unknown soldiers is an example of the ways in which nationalism kind of replaces religion in the way in which we behave. So people are quite respectful, or at least historically were quite respectful of these monuments because they um, were um, because, because of their original kind of signifi signification, but no religious function at all. So, uh, so I wonder if you can maybe, uh, if the, both of you can actually sort of like elaborate on what I, uh, the, the quote that um, you referred to from Ashley Thompson, right, where she talks about this return as a sort of like repetition, um, uh, that it's fused with some kind of ideological meaning. Uh, and it, it's quite clear in your case, but I've, I also detect that in the sense that there is a continuity in the use of the sort of like modernist sort of like vernacular structure as religious sort of like form of architecture in terms of the crematorium and in the form of the stupa. And that is in some ways a kind of return or in a way a sort of like a continuity or repetition of a traditional sort of like form of architecture that facilitates certain sort of like experience of religiosity. Can you, do you want to sort of like talk more about that? Yeah, and I think that relates some way to my questions to Roger because it struck me that um, there seemed to be no religious aspect at all in these monuments that Roger has just presented. But in Thailand, for most monuments, and um, even though they are secular monuments, but religious ceremonies were performed together all the time. Like for annual commemoration, for example, there will be like a um, monk mm -hmm. or Brahmins to come to the ceremony and have to have perform some ritual performance. And it seems that um, on the one hand, these are modernist structure, but on the other hand, religious aspects, or which is like a, a, a symbol of the traditional, they did not disappear. It did not right. disappear. It just goes together, and it wasn't in conflict. It okay. just can go together and make these structures in some ways. Uh, sacred place, probably not like religious place like temple, but people worship them in a way that uh, had something to do with religious aspect or some dead people became someone that they can pray and ask for something mm -hmm. in return. The same kind of reverence. Like. Yeah. But can that idea of religiosity then be expanded to this idea of the nation as a kind of like civic religion that uh, you mentioned in uh, some of the photographs that you've shown, uh, Roger, that um, uh, you know, tourists are obviously sort of like using the space and it's become a site of leisure, but um, maybe in its sort of like previous incarnations, was it used as a kind of like parade ground? Uh, 
uh, did it serve other kinds of like civic religious sort of like function? Yeah, for sure. Um, Cambodia and Laos, like Thailand, um, the, the national motto before 1975 um, and still today in Cambodia is nation, religion, king. So even though these monuments are secular, also nation, religion, king, nation, well, religion, king, so which corresponds to, which corresponds um, to the uh, Rama the sixth sort of like formulation of uh, yeah, which imported from the UK. Which is imported from the UK, of course. <laughs> Um, so that, that's no longer the case in, in Laos, which is still nominally communist, but it is now again the case in, in Cambodia. Um, and when the Patrasai was first built, that was the case in Laos as well. It was nation, religion, king. Mm -hmm. So it means that to, to, to worship in a, in, a, in a nationalist way, even though not explicitly in a religious way, is indivisible from Theravada Buddhism and royalism. Mm -hmm. um, How is this indivisibility sort of like expressed? I think um, not only in the design with its references to the Theravada stupa, but also, as I said, in its sighting in the city, mm -hmm. in, in relation not only to political or civic buildings, but also to um, key ancient religious sites in both Phnom Penh and Vinh Chan. Right, cool. Um, yes, uh, so we have two questions. Uh, do you want to start with the lady at the back, or, or you have the mic here, so maybe Titi? You, uh, and then we'll come to you. Uh, thank you very much for <coughs> both of your talks. And actually, it's a quite a simple question. But s you know, for the Thai case, we are talking about this reconstruction or resignification of the architectural form. That's somewhat. It turns out to be a hybrid of forms, right, between the royalist and the constitutional regime. But somewhat the main idea of the uh, People's Party is the idea about the people, right? And actually for both of your talks, the dimension of the people is somewhat missing. It's almost like the contestation of a similar uh, a semiotical meaning or symbolic meaning at the ruling class level, right? Even though the architects are somewhat from the uh, civilian class, but they are somewhat the civilian is much more educated or more privileged than the normal educated people. Especially the, uh, pra I uh, forgot the name, but he has this some somewhat royal title to his name, even though he's the uh, architect of the monuments that you are talking about. So I just wonder whether at the popular demotic level, besides of their role as being the spectator or the audience of these architectural creations, what roles do they play in this kind of regime who somewhat really privilege or centers on the um, sort of democracy or, 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 or some sorts of democratic forces? Okay, thank you. Um, first, I think I have to say that um, even though the Peaceful Party promoted the idea of citizens and equality and everything, but still in terms of creating something on a national level, it must derive from someone who belongs to the upper class because at that time they were the educated people. That's the fact. But the, the difference between the People's Party um, thinkers, I think I would use this word, and those from the previous regime is that the focus or the importance that was given on their invention. For the People's Party, um, they talk about the people, equality, and in their six principles that you probably know very well. Um, and that those ideas reflect in what they create. For example, the simple architectural form that I talked about, because if a very delicate form, gold and jewels and point tier roofs represent the monarchical um, image, they had to invent something which was totally on the opposite of that form. And that's how a uh, simple form of international style architecture came to be used as political statement in Thailand in terms of architectural invention. And as for the audience, 
I would say that in that period, the people, the general people, respond quite well to the People's Party. Um, at the cremation, the, actually it was Prinarit who wrote in the letter that like, thousands of people came to pay respect to those who died in the cremation and they threw flowers, incense and candles to the crematorium pavilion because it was so dense, it was so packed, they couldn't even reach to the place. So the response was quite well, I think. And other than these two structures, the government at that time initiated many things to encourage people to see constitutionalism as their new, probably the same, uh, the word that Simon has used, um, the civic religion. There was a call for short novels about how people should support and protect the Ratatamanun, the constitutionalism, and it was responded very well by Thai writers. But even though constitutionalism was a, a new religion, a civic religion, uh, Buddhism, religious, religious, traditional one, coexist, and they don't in conflict with each, each other. They just went together very well. Roger, do you have a rejoinder? Um, it's an excellent question, thank you. Um, and that was, in, it was one of the challenges for me, thinking about monuments as opposed to other kinds of buildings, was how on earth to get the people into the story. Because unlike other kinds of architecture from the period, it has no function other than the ones that are officially invested in it. Um, so unlike um, housing, even exhibition halls, which are repurposed or, or um, uh, changed by their users, there are no users for these buildings other than those that are officially permitted. Um, I tried to get at the people, um, if you like, in um, more recent years by looking at, um, by talking about people's attitudes to the two monuments in the cities and by looking at artworks made in more recent years. Um, but in terms of the people's attitudes to the monuments when they were first built or in the decades before 1975, it's now almost impossible to access. Um, in both countries, the press was tightly uh, controlled, especially so in Cambodia. So even if people had wanted to write critical um, perspectives on the independence monument, they would not have been published. Um, in Ding Tan, there was a little bit more freedom of, of the press, thanks to the wonderful um, democratic impulses of the wonderful America. Um, but all of those archives um, are dispersed, if not lost. So I haven't been able to find any kind of commentary on, on the Patrasai monument from when it was built, let alone any critical commentary. So I think um, it's a peculiarity of um, monument structures as opposed to other forms of design that they're just functionless, weird edifices that, that don't have the same kind of uh, dynamic relationship to their users because they don't really have any, any users. I, I just forgot to say something, uh, to say one thing, that other than creating a totally new thing to compete the previous regime, the other way is to give new meaning to the existing forms and convert it. You don't have to purge everything you know, to, to, to create something new. You can also use the things that already exist and change the meaning and employ it. And for example, the Pan Rajatamanun image that originally from the ceremony on the 10 December 1932 that was used to promote the People's Party new regime with the image of the king granting the constitution. But after the Bavaradet Rebellion, the image of Pan Rajatamanun separated from the image of the king and became a standalone symbol and became a new anti-royalist symbol despite its um, origins, for example. Um, Chitu, can you help me take this, the other question? Thank you. Testing. Um, it's a very simple question. It's much simpler than the other guys. I just wanted to ask you, Ms. Tanavi, uh, when you give this uh, topic, it's a very sensitive issue, I find, but um, could you do this same talk in Thailand? Would there be any controversial to have this? It's a good question. Uh, but you have th done the thank talk you. I, I, I haven't given the same 
presentation last year in Thailand, but that was in an international conference. So it's like it yeah, was also in Chiang Mai. In Chiang Mai, in, in the north of Thailand. Red, yeah. red area. Uh, kind of, yeah. Police came to the conference, but not because of me, but because of other activists raising the signs, like protesting the coup and military government. But yes, I can. Do you have a question? Uh, yes. Uh, next question, Dennis. I think we have to wrap up after this, but yeah, last question. I'm curious to know if these structures, uh, before they were built, and when they were selecting the locations, do they actually follow any rules like of German sea, like feng shui and all that? Like maybe traditional German sea or? Um, or for cosmology? Uh, 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 various sort of like traditional religious cosmological principles guiding the construction of these according, sites according yeah. to Axial. Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Um, in Ding Chan, according to the designer who, as I said, was trained as a journalist, not as a, an architect or an artist, um, this, the siting was deliberate and was, was a careful consideration. Um, and as I said, the Lansang Boulevard runs from the Tat Luang Stupa, which is um, the kind of historic center of the city. Um, it was also the boulevard on which the American and other diplomatic headquarters were based at that time. Um, but beyond that, no records. In Phnom Penh, um, the design was not selected from a competition, but was rather invited by um, the, the former king and prince, Sihanouk himself, who invited um, Van Mullivan, the architect, um, to design the structure, but gave him quite specific instructions about about its ornamentation, drawing on this 10th century Bantia Sade temple. Um, and together they decided on the location um, at this intersection of these two um, historically, but also kind of presently important boulevards. So that was sort of more of a negotiation between, between the prince and um, the architect. And now we do want to include, um, are there any sort of like hospital? I'm, I'm sure it's in form. Well, um, no, for, for the crematorium on Sanam Luang, I think I have yeah. made clear that the, the, mm. the purpose was to use the same ground at the royal crematorium. And for the monument, the location was the, the location where the battle took place. So when the government troop fought with the Boer Dead Rebellion, one of the area is was Luxi, where the monument was located. And this is now currently a military district, right? I no, mean, it's no, it's a... just like a typical district in okay. Bangkok. But um, they have been building a new construction way and roads and many things in that area. So the monument was oh, the moved flyover. to oh. another location, but still in the same area. Okay. Like just cross the street, like they lift it. Right. Um, did, were you, were, did you attend the recent cre uh, cremation of the last king, Bumipon, Rama the Nine? You really want to have a policy here, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, maybe we can wrap this up. <laughs>